Thank you again, John. And uh, yeah, I have to take a moment here and just say, you know, really, uh, one of the great things about being commissioner of Forest Parks and Recreation is I'm, I'm sitting here thinking, I gotta tell Nick about the Avenza app. I don't have to because Keith took care of it. Thank you, Keith. Uh, it's a great call, Nick, and it's true. We have uh, a whole training program and making that available to practitioners out there. Next, uh, I'd like to uh, introduce uh, and call to the stage Tom Berry, field representative for Senator Leahy, who uh, will offer a few uh, updates on federal legislation relating to environmental monitoring in the region. Welcome, Tom. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, you can't talk about climate change, I guess, without thinking about time frames. And I, I guarantee you I'm a lot younger than your prior two speakers. Um, uh, although I was on the planet at the first Earth Day. Uh, and um, in, in any case, uh, I'll get back to that. But I work for Senator uh, Patrick Leahy, who was elected in 1974 when I was a uh, freshman in college. And I do remember my first uh, semester uh, where I was going to school, uh, a meteorology class where I saw a graph of the CO2 measurements on Mount Kilauea. And there was something that was beginning to look like a hook in that, in that curve, which is now famously and infamously uh, been called the hockey stick and I don't know now it's a rocket to the moon I guess um, but uh, thinking back on timelines too um, and there are a number of references to acid rain and red spruce and what's happening on those fronts and uh, I've, I've been with Senator Leahy for a while but again he's been at this since 1974 and one of my favorite photographs from the archives that I found um, in uh, the environmental papers at Senator, of Senator Leahy is a photograph on top of Camel Stump and uh, the third EPA administrator under Ronald Reagan, a man named Thomas, was on the top of the mountain along with the eminent uh, plant pathologist at the University of Vermont, Hub Vogelman, uh, and Jim Jeffords, Pat Leahy, then Governor Kunin, looking at red spruce dieback. And I have no doubt that that visit, along with a lot of other monitoring reports, led directly to the Clean Air Act amendments that were signed in, uh, uh, under uh, President H. W. Bush. Uh, probably the last piece of significant environmental legislation signed into law in this country, unfortunately. Um, so on that down note, um, I, I, I'm going to cut to the chase and talk a little bit about appropriations. Senator Leahy is the um, vice chairman of the U.S. Senate Appropriations Committee, and uh, I know there's a lot of um, federal uh, uh, public servants in the room today and others who focus on what the federal government's doing, at least on spending. Uh, the good news on the spending front is that we are very likely to have FY20 spending bills in place by next Friday. It's not guaranteed, but uh, an agreement among all of the congressional negotiators, House, Senate, Republican, Democrat, was announced yesterday. And again, Senator Leahy was uh, in those negotiations. And so, uh, barring any major bumps in the road on the larger political issues we're all aware of right now, uh, we should have those spending bills in place across the board for FY20 uh, by the end of next week, which will be good news. Um, you know, we're looking down the, the barrel of a government shutdown at this time last year, unfortunately. And the news is pretty good on those spending bills. Uh, big picture is that uh, you know all of the agencies that um, uh, in this room uh, know and love should be at least level funded. Uh, EPA, U.S. Fish and Wildlife Service, National Park Service, U.S. Forest Service, um, uh, NOAA, National Science Foundation, etc. The funding has been um, more or less level uh, in recent years, and we should be able to land there again. Now, with all of the information we've been soaking up this morning, level funding clearly is not nearly enough on uh, these programs. But you know, I, I remember standing at this podium in 2017, and we were all aghast at the budget that had been delivered to Capitol Hill by uh, newly elected President Trump, which uh, proposed to devastate most of the programs that I've just mentioned. So um, a number of years in, we're still looking at solid funding uh, for those agencies and a lot of the work that you all do. And, and thank you for that work. Uh, the picture for Vermont is actually very good. Uh, Senator Leahy does do his best to keep track of programs in Vermont 
and a short list of programs that we're tracking would include, of course, the uh, Forest Ecosystem Monitoring Co-op, which has um, been doing quite well, and this conference is really fantastic. The funding for the, for the co cooperative um, sh will potentially as much as double in FY20. We'll see what the numbers look like when we get those bills, if we get them done. Um, the Northeastern States Research Cooperative is stood back up in the funding bills, and some of you have some history with that. It would, could be a good partner organization with um, the monitoring, uh, and it involves a lot of the same geography that the monitoring cooperative does now. Uh, the Great Lakes Fishery Commission line, and, and I'm going to talk in shorthand, a lot of you know these. Uh, the programs for Lake Champlain, uh, U.S. Fish and Wildlife Service and EPA programs for Lake Champlain, primarily funded through U.S. Fishery, uh, the, the Great Lakes Fishery Commission and the EPA will both be uh, very strong in those bills if they're adopted, at least based on the last numbers that I saw. And of course, there's a fair amount of conservation and monitoring work in those bills, as long as some new work that we're able to help stand up uh, in the Lake Magog watershed uh, through the Great Lakes Fisheries Commission. So good news on all of those fronts as well. Um, there is uh, funding which hopefully will help the Wibbesy School acquire a very substantial new piece of uh, monitoring and research equipment. More on that later. Fingers crossed on that. Uh, the Sea Grant program should be solid. Uh, and an interesting, you know, not to make it all about Vermont, uh, interesting twist is that um, the Great Thicket National Wildlife Refuge, uh, which is a uh, uh, shrubland refuge that's established in Massachusetts, Connecticut, um, New York, and I don't know if Rhode Island's included as well. There's never been any land acquisition. And uh, due to some interesting work by a constituent who had access to Senator Udall, Senator Leahy, and the congressional delegation in Connecticut, we're looking at opening up a funding line for the first time for that National Wildlife Refuge. So uh, that it won't be a huge amount to begin with, but it will open up the opportunity to begin to acquire some um, land and conserve land around that National Wildlife Refuge. So. Uh, Mostly all good news on, on those bills. Keep, keep tuned as to whether we get it done by next Friday. Right now, we're on that trajectory. Uh, so uh, at my desk, you now we're looking forward to FY21. I know a lot of you in the room, I talked to you about what the needs are. I'm soaking up as much as I can here. Reach out to me, talk to me about priorities for FY21, because um, it's pen to paper on that right now, at least at the staff level. Uh, other things that are going on in, in Congress, uh, below the stuff that's on the front pages, um, some good news uh, on a few fronts, at least. Uh, you know, we've permanently authorized the Land and Water Conservation Fund, and legislation to permanently and fully fund that is surprisingly uh, doing surprisingly well. It has significant traction in both the House and the Senate, and that would just be a huge win if we can permanently fund uh, and fully fund the, the Land and Water Conservation Fund. Um, on the climate change front, a lot of um, things have been wrapped into the, the Green New Deal, which is more of a messaging resolution than a piece of legislation. Senator Leahy has not, at this point at least, co-sponsored that, but is working on a number of other fronts. But looking at the Green New Deal and sort of bringing it back around to where we are on activism and a whole lot more that the federal government needs to be doing, um, is, you know, this time Last week, um, I was talking to um, 20 or 30 uh, people who um, <laughs> certainly were not on the planet uh, on the first Earth Day. Um, students uh, from 13 to maybe 23 years old who had occupied our office um, uh, pushing for the senator to sponsor the Green New Deal. They went out front and had a little uh, bonfire in front of the, our offices and sang songs. Um, in 1974, I joined a couple of environmental demonstrations when I was a freshman in college. I can't remember seeing people on the streets uh, on politically on uh, environmental issues in their intervening um, uh, time in my career, and I think there's some good news there uh, that, you know, it's late, but um, there are young people paying attention, and uh, so, you know, hopefully we can do better going forward. Thank you. Thank you, Tom, and uh, please, uh, please share with the Senator our collective thanks for what is clearly a long-standing um, strength and support. Um, and, um, and I'd like to thank you, Tom, for always engaging actively with this amazing community of forest 
practitioners and forest ecosystem practitioners and stewards in this state. So thank you again. Um, okay, this, this is going to, yeah, right? This um, will conclude the plenary session, um, but before you go to coffee break, uh, I want to uh, thank again our speakers, and um, you know, we've covered a lot of ground, but this is really just the beginning of the conversation, and I really do want to, uh, as I sit and look around and, and listen, um, there's a lot to do, and I would like to encourage you all to continue to engage in the contributed talks, which begin at promptly at 11.20, uh, and, in, and especially in the working sessions in the afternoon, to Harness the power, this collective power of this amazing community to um, think about how we um, take these emerging themes and translate them into actions. Uh, so I really encourage you to do that. Stick with it. Lean in. And thank you all again for being here. Cheers. Cheers.